Hello everyone, welcome back, or if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. My name is Risa, and in my videos, I typically talk about makeup. I review beauty products, I upload makeup tutorials. Because I started my channel at age 42, and I am currently 50, the vast majority of my videos are catered to those of us with mature skin. I've also posted quite a few fashion videos. In the past, I've done fashion videos with Walmart, Venus Clothing, Nordstrom, and I'll be honest with you, those videos never performed all that well. And it never really bothered me. I mean, of course, as a YouTuber, we always want our videos to get views. That's how we sustain our channels is by having people watch our videos and watch the ads and use our affiliate links. That's how a channel survives. So while the feedback that I would get, the comments I would receive were always extremely positive, the views didn't really show that people wanted to see more of my fashion. Now, I'm gonna be dropping some more truth on you. And this is probably the most honest video I've ever done. I'm never, I shouldn't have said that, I'm never dishonest. But of course I don't always or can't always share with you behind the scenes thoughts and actions. So you will be hearing a lot of um, truth in this video and things you may not have known. And one of those things is when I would do those fashion videos with Venus, I definitely struggled. If you know me at all, you know that I have a, I don't wanna say unique style because I don't think it's very unique, but I would say that my style is more the minority of people in my age demographic. And I did not word that well. Um, let's just say, that the majority of fashion influencers my age don't represent my style. And I feel like the people that do represent my style are very few and far between. And I know a lot of you agree with me because when I would post fashion videos here on YouTube or anytime I post fashion on Instagram, which is a lot more often, I get a lot of people commenting asking me to post more fashion because they too cannot find other influencers that are representative of their style. And I've really been mulling it over for a long time whether or not I should do this video and what I should actually say in this video and what the actual point of this video is. And then I was in the shower one day, which is where I do my best thinking, and I thought, you know, if I'm having this struggle right now, I'm sure other women are too, and maybe it's something that we should talk about. While we can't actually have a back and forth dialogue, obviously, because I'm not doing this live, I do think that the comment section could be very, very helpful. We could perhaps get a good dialogue going in the comments, wherein we sort of help each other out. For those of you that are of the same mindset that I am, we can kind of get together and share our thoughts and share where we shop and who we follow for inspiration. So hopefully this video reaches the right audience. Hopefully no one takes offense to it. I don't plan on saying anything offensive, but this is the internet. Anything you do or say can be twisted and or taken the wrong way. I realized I got a little sidetracked when I was talking about doing those videos for Walmart and for Venus. And Walmart was a struggle because as much as I really, really understand that people are on very tight budgets these days and people want to find a good bargain, I like to find a good bargain and I did often find some really great pieces at Walmart that I was able to promote either in a video or in a post on Instagram. But I have to tell you, I really, really struggled with that finding outfits that were true to me and true to my style that I would actually wear. I'm not going to work with a store or a makeup brand that I don't use and believe in. I'm not going to promote a store that I don't shop at. 
years ago, I think it was maybe five or six years ago, I was approached by a store, and I'm not sure if I should be giving names. I've already started giving names, so why not? It was uh, Chico's. They had this campaign that they were doing and it had something to do with wearing your age on your shirt. And they offered me quite a bit of money to participate in this campaign. And I had to turn it down because I don't shop at Chico's. It is not my style. And I feel like I have to qualify that statement for those that don't really know me. Maybe this is the first video of mine that you're seeing and you don't know my heart and you don't know what I have been preaching to my viewers for years, which is to wear what you like. And I am not someone who judges what other people wear. If you are 42, 45, 50, 60, whatever age, and you love Chico's, and you think that that is what is your style and that is what is age appropriate to you, or you're able to find things, even if it's not really your style, you are able to find things in there that mix in with your style, that is fantastic and I am extremely happy for you. But I am also happy for those ladies who are still shopping at Forever 21. What I'm trying to make is that I do not judge what any woman wears. So I'm making this video kind of asking for some help, letting you all know that I too am struggling, but I'm not struggling because I'm afraid to wear something that someone else won't approve of. I just want to have an easier time finding clothing that fits my lifestyle, that fits my budget, that I truly feel good in, that I am wearing not because society says I should wear it. I want to still be true to my style. So I hope that is kind of making sense. But back to the whole Walmart and Chico's and Venus. So I passed on the Chico's offer and with Walmart, I definitely was able to find some cute pieces. My husband always takes my photos for those kind of campaigns. When I'm working with a brand and I need clothing photos or clothing videos, my husband would always say to me, where is that from? It's so pretty or it's such a cute outfit. And I'd say, Walmart. And he'd say, wow, you really know how to find nice looking pieces at Walmart. And a lot of the time I would have to order it online. I would say that Walmart puts most of their really cute pieces online. They're not usually available in stores. At least that's what I have found. And then I also think a lot of their stuff looks better on a person than on the hanger. So I am not saying that I would never work with Walmart again. I'm just being brutally honest with you and letting you know that on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't find myself looking to Walmart for my everyday clothing or my going out clothing. I will say though that I would consider it a lot more now than I would have in the past before working with them because I am aware now that I can find some great pieces at a great price at Walmart. In fact, there are some jeans that I wear, that are from Walmart, that I wear more often, I reach for them more often than I reach for my jeans that are $178 or $225, and that is the truth. A lot of you have asked me, Risa, what happened to your Venus videos? Well, about a year ago, I guess you could say I burned that bridge. Or maybe a better way to put it is that they lit the match and then I burned it down. Because, um, yeah, what happened was I, for about three or four years, had been doing seasonal videos with Venus. And when I first started working with them, I had the ability to choose what Ever I wanted from their website or catalog. And again, I'm dropping some truth. It was not always easy for me to find clothing, dresses, shoes, jeans, sweaters from Venus that I truly loved. But that was only when they began limiting what I could choose from. I could go onto the Venus website right now or look in the catalog and find at least five or six things that I really like that I would order right now. But eventually they started wanting me to focus on certain lookbooks that they would send me. So I had to pick out of just certain, you know, lookbooks. And 
I struggled to find things that I really liked. So that was kind of the beginning of the end. I started feeling like oh, I really don't know how much longer I can work for them if they're going to keep limiting what I can choose from. I need to be true to my style and I need to give my viewers who now know my style something that is authentic to me, that they can say, yeah, I totally see this as a Risa-esque type of outfit. And I feel like I need to backtrack a little bit for those of you that might be new. My style is definitely feminine, sexy. I do not have the lifestyle where I go to a nine to five job every day. So you won't really find me wearing a lot of business clothes. I do live in Las Vegas where you can get away with shorter, tighter, more revealing. And I have always subscribed to the idea that you should only show off one thing. Like if you're going to show off your legs, don't show off cleavage. If you're going to show off a little cleavage, don't show off too much leg or shoulder, that kind of thing. I like to keep it classy. And I think that everything I wear is classy, although that is clearly up for debate based on comments I've received over the years. But what I'm getting at is that is kind of my style. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, Risa, what about Ann Taylor? What about J. Jill? What about, you know, XYZ store? Can't you find things there? No, I usually cannot because that's just not my style. I also like the kind of boho look, the 70s free people vibe, a wide leg pant, a flowy sweater. I like anything off the shoulder. I like um, bell sleeves. I like embellishments. Not too much embellishments because I find too much embellishment can be tacky. So I probably should have said all that at the beginning of this video, but I apologize. At least now you're kind of getting a feel for what my style is. So back to Venus. At the beginning of last year, they decided to wipe their entire Instagram clean. Now, I did skip over one important point. Prior to them wiping their Instagram clean, I and other regular people, not models, not 20-something influencers, appeared on their Instagram page repeatedly. You saw me on there several times and some other YouTubers around my age that you might know of. They were often on the Venus page. And then what they decided to do was just go the route of catering to or trying to appeal to a younger demographic. It looked like they were starting to only use, again, they completely wiped their Instagram clean and started over and they were using just models, models from their website or their catalog. And then they were using a lot of 20 something big top tier influencers, you know, these 25 year olds that have a million followers or more. And you know, these girls had no idea what Venus was prior to Venus reaching out to them and paying them probably an enormous sum of money. These girls don't know what Venus is. I have asked so many 20 something year old women that I know if they have heard of Venus clothing. And their immediate response is, no, what is that? I've never heard of it. So I get that maybe that's what Venus was trying to do. They were trying to make a name for themselves in the younger demographic. But then they completely cut out those of us who are in the older demographic. And I'm not just talking about women in their 40s and beyond. I'm talking about women that appear to be anywhere over the age of 30. They were just wiped clean from their promotions and their social media. And I called them out on it. I did. And I even sent them an email expressing my disappointment about what they had done. Not necessarily that they were not working with me anymore, because as I was starting to say, I was ready to kind of part ways with them anyway, based on the restrictions they were putting on me. But then I just got really upset because we are already so underrepresented in the world of fashion. If you think about the stores that younger people shop at, that we can still shop at. We do still shop at. My dress for New Year's Eve was from Opali. And this website doesn't show any model, doesn't use any model, as far as I can tell, on their advertising or marketing. I don't think I've seen a woman over the age of maybe 27 in their advertising. But here I am, a 50-year-old woman, 
ordering from their website and I don't think there's anything wrong with me in this dress. In fact, I got so many compliments just walking from our cruise ship cabin to dinner with my husband. But yet these brands refuse to use our age demographic as models and we just accept it. So getting back to Venus, after a while I noticed that there was definitely some backlash. A lot of the people that follow me on Instagram after I sort of called them out on what they had done, a lot of my viewers were very, very disappointed and they went over to their Instagram page and expressed their disappointment. I know several told me that they sent emails. But then I started to see them working with at least one other influencer that I know of who is 50 years old. And I have nothing negative to say about her. In fact, she is like the perfect Venus model. Her body is phenomenal. A lot of you think that I have a really nice body and I'm not mad at my body. I'm a size 6'8". I do try to dress to compliment my body, but I will tell you I have a drawer full of shapewear. I need tummy control. I have got a pancake butt. And this other influencer that I'm referring to, who is 50, she has a perfect everything. Perfect stomach, perfect butt, perfect just like everything. And so that's a little disappointing too though because that's who they chose to represent women over 50. And that is not what most of us look like over 50. That's not what most of us look like over 40. Heck, there are women of every age that have never and will never look like that. And again, this is no hate to her. She works hard for that body and she looks amazing and kudos to her for showing it off and having the ability to, you know, hopefully make money working with um, Venus, making good money. So my point is that that was kind of just disappointing as well. I feel like we need to start making some noise. We need to start reaching out to some of these brands that we do shop with and ask them to work with more influencers or maybe not even working with influencers. Just show in their advertising and their marketing that we exist and that we don't all want to suddenly cover up from head to toe. If you do, you've probably left this video, you know, a long time ago, but if you're like me, you're still here, you probably kind of relate to what I've been saying and also want to see yourself represented. We've already started tackling this in the beauty industry when it comes to, you know, anti-aging creams being shown on 22 year olds. We are starting to see more advertising using age appropriate models and not seeing a 22 year old promoting an anti-wrinkle cream. We are seeing women in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond promoting these anti-aging foundations or foundations and products for mature skin, which I love it, that's great. But it still needs improvement, it still needs to be worked on, but that's because we were really, really loud about it. We were, as a whole, we told companies that we were angry, that we were not being represented. And I still kind of am annoyed, as I'm sure a lot of you are, when I see these Tarte. Tarte's a big one. They do these brand trips, right? And they take these young influencers on these incredible trips. And the owner of Tarte, I think she's around my age. I think she's like 49, 50 years old. I think her name is Maureen Kelly. And yes, I think she's around my age. So she should know better. She should know that we deserve representation. And I'm not, you know, raising my hand here saying, oh, contact me. I mean, I wouldn't be mad about it, let's be honest. But there are plenty of other bigger influencers than me that are on here on YouTube and definitely over on TikTok. There are a lot of older influencers that are just blowing up over there, which I think is fantastic. They deserve an invitation. Why aren't they getting invited? So we still have a ways to go in that regard, but we have a very, very, very long way to go when it comes to fashion and representation in fashion. So now I wanna to get to some of the people that I follow that I think are fabulous. And the list is not long. 
And if there's somebody that you follow for fashion that you love, please share them with us in the comments. I will say that I am aware of some other influencers that are here on YouTube that started maybe with beauty and have switched over to fashion. And again, more honesty, most of what they wear is not what I would wear. And I'm pretty sure they would say the exact same thing about me. Most of the stuff I wear is stuff that they would never wear. There's nothing wrong with that. We should have our own style. And it is about finding someone whose style you kind of vibe with. So for me, I really love Erin Busby. Now I'd be willing to guess, a lot of you already follow her. A lot of you already probably watch her videos, follow her on Instagram. She's great. Do I love everything she shows? Of course not. But I love that she caters to all different fashion styles. Like me and my beauty videos and my beauty content, I do cater more towards a mature demographic, as does she, but I feel like the variety of styles that she shows opens it up to everyone. Whether you're someone who likes to dress more sexy, whether you're someone who likes to dress more conservatively, whether you are someone who has a budget for a $900 dress or someone who only has a budget for a $20 dress. She really covers everything and I love that about her. I have seen her wear some just drop dead gorgeous things that are, I'll be honest with you, out of my budget but I take inspiration from that and I try to see if I can find something similar that's maybe not a thousand dollars. So I highly recommend checking out her videos, following her on Instagram. I think she might be on TikTok as well. And then there's this woman, Lucy Wims on Instagram. I die for her style. Why she has less than 300,000 followers on Instagram and not millions is mind blowing to me because I think she's amazing. So here are some of her looks. She is over 40. Her style is everything I aspire to have. And a lot of times when you see me in an outfit or a dress that I've posted either here or on Instagram, mostly on Instagram, I've gotten the inspiration from her. So I think that if you're someone who doesn't have that style gene, which I don't think I do. I know what I like, but I'm no Erin Busby. I would never call myself a style guru. I've done videos in the past where I said, this is where I shop. I've also done videos about age appropriate clothing, which I hate that term, but you will never see me get on here and preach to you what I think is out or what I think is in because that's just, I don't even know. I don't even know anymore. I just want to feel good in what I wear. I still want to look sexy. I still want to look feminine because that I do know is my style. And of course I do have my opinions. I do sometimes look at things and think that they're frumpy or they're too old for me. Or I look at things and I think they're kind of tacky and someone else might love them. That's the beauty of having your own personal style and the beauty of having all of these options of influencers of, I hate that word, but of content creators to follow who vibe with you, who kind of mesh with your personal style. So I feel like I've been talking way longer than I intended, but what else is new? I'm hoping that this brought some insight into me and kind of like why I don't do a lot of fashion videos, but I would love your feedback in the comments. Let me know if there's a store maybe, like a lot of people have recommended White House Black Market to me, but I gotta tell you, every time I go in there, it's very, very rare that I find things that I love. And if I do find something that I really like that I might wear or show in a video, I feel like it's kind of overpriced. And I have a hard time buying something that I know I won't get a lot, spending a lot of money on something that I know I won't wear a lot. 
And that goes back to shopping for your lifestyle. If I were someone that had a nine to five job or was going to business meetings, that kind of thing, I would definitely invest in some nice blazers and you know, some maybe nicer trouser pants, but I do have those things. But I bought a really nice looking blazer over at Zara. For the few times that I wear a black fitted blazer, I've got a nice one that I bought at Zara. And I know some of you are probably thinking, well, Risa, you can buy some things on sale, they have things on sale, but then the problem becomes if I wear it in a video, you guys wanna know where to get it, or you guys want to buy it for yourselves and then you click on the link and it's sold out because sale items tend to go quickly, they're limited in sizing. So it's kind of like a catch-22 for a content creator. So if you have any other options, that would be for my type of style. I've already worked with Revolve. I shop for like summer dresses and even dressy dresses on ASOS. And yes, I have purchased some really nice things on Amazon, especially like summer dresses, maxi dresses, even some sweaters. And I'm sure a lot of you will say TJ Maxx, Marshalls, but again, I run into a problem there. Me personally, I run into a problem there because if I wear it in a video and you all want to purchase what I'm wearing in a video, I can't link it for you. And believe it or not, people often do get upset when I tell them, a sweater is two or three years old. Like this sweater that is about five or six years old. I honestly can't even remember where I got it, but I, I love it. I think it was maybe Red Dress Boutique, which I have linked in the description box. Not the sweater, but the website. Hopefully it's still in business. But I think it's time to close out this video. I've been talking for a really long time. Hopefully it was entertaining, informative. Hopefully you got something out of it because as I said, when I started in the intro. I wasn't really sure where I was going with this. I didn't really have anything planned. I didn't have like bullet points that I wanted to hit. I just wanted to talk to you all like you are my friends, which a lot of you I do feel like over the years we've gotten pretty friendly. We talk back and forth in comments or DMs and um, I think a lot of you are struggling too, like I am. Where do we shop? What do we wear? Why aren't we being represented? Why does it feel like our only options are Express and Forever 21 or J. Jill and Ann Taylor. Again, nothing wrong with those stores if you like them, but I have a feeling if you like those stores, you're not still watching this video. So let's just have a little dialogue in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on this video. I'd love to have your feedback. I also would love to know where you're shopping, who you follow for inspiration, who you think would be good to follow for someone like me and others like me that still want to dress a little sexy. We're not uber conservative dressers. We like to show a little leg, maybe a little cleavage. And you know what? If you wanna show both, go for it. So yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will consider doing so. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and you will become a part of the Risa Does Makeup family. I do post new videos at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me over on Instagram and TikTok. That is where I post more fashion content. And my username is the same on all platforms. It's Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.